Joel Klatt. Good to see <laughs> At you, At least Joel. the last two years. Yes, you're right. Um, <laughs> but you, it's good you, to, it's good you've to be You've broken it to me gently. You've broken to me gently all those years. Yeah, so. listen, I thought that they had a good shot uh, this year, it's and awful. I was even <laughs> wrong about that. Uh, it, partly because of last night's 15th pick, you know, because he was brilliant that I night. know, and it was funny last night uh, with David Shaw talking about how brilliant he uh, Dwayne Haskins was in the Maryland game yeah. because we were talking about the fact that he's going to play well, not in Maryland, but Virginia. Yeah. He's going to be playing in the Mid-Atlantic where he played his high school ball. And uh, I told him, I'm like, thanks for bringing up the Maryland game and not the game after that game. Yeah, appreciate, exactly. Appreciate well, I mean, he was, he was actually committed to Maryland. Right. Uh, and, and, and then there were some things that happened where all of a sudden Ohio State had a spot open up, and then he committed to Ohio State uh, after that. But real quick, I want to go back to that because you bring up th- – yes, let's start go, with Dwayne Haskins if you don't mind. It. No, please. We haven't really hit it so much. Here's yet. why I'm surprised he fell is because, for me, trajectory of a player has a big – um, uh, value proposition. If I'm going to value a kid, I, I don't want. If you've played for three years, there's a good chance you're probably just going to get a little bit better. If you've played for one year and I'm seeing growth throughout the year, I can at least project out that you're going to have a pretty substantial growth pattern for the first two, three years of your NFL career. Well, that's exactly what I saw from. Uh, Dwayne Haskins. I saw him as the backup when he came in, down six in the big house. He leads them back to victory in, in a really brilliant second half after JT Barrett got injured. Then he's the starting quarterback, and their team kind of hits this lull when they lose Nick Bosa to the injury. And then all of a sudden, Urban Meyer had a conversation with him before that Ma- Maryland game that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. And he brought up Kobe Bryant and how Kobe Bryant was assertive both vocally and physically as the leader. And then Dwayne took that to heart. And Rich, in that game against Maryland, rushes for three touchdowns, really put the Buckeyes on his back and willed them to victory. And then there was no quarterback in the country, even Kyler Murray, uh, Tua Tungavailoa, no quarterback in the country, played better over Mm -hmm. his last four games than Dwayne Haskins. He was the best quarterback of the, I would call, the top two round guys in this draft when it comes to playing against top 25 defenses in college and yards per play. Uh, His statistics were through the roof. So I'm shocked that he fell to Washington, but Washington has got to be elated with the value at 15. And a good good kid, too. I mean, who knows the area and and, uh, the... uh, And the 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 connections with Kevin O'Connell. Right, from obviously formerly, uh, you know, of the Jet staff, and he goes way and the back. the 49ers, he was under Ryan Day That's when right. Ryan Day was with the 49ers. So that, that, that makes sense right there. And now also twice a year he'll be going against the Giants team who went in another direction, and that was one of the videos tonight that, that went viral, last night that went viral, was him looking on his phone when Daniel Jones was named and him just sort of like shaking his just head. Just a quick shake of the head. Just a quick shake of the head. I and did a little more than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mine, so let's get in. Mine was a little more than a shake of the head. Oh, my goodness. Um, I thought that the New York Giants had a disastrous night last night. Disastrous. And I think it might take years to recover from no it. No kidding. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You cannot miss when you've got the opportunity to have two first-round picks when you're drafting quarterbacks. Why are, why are the Denver Broncos in the state that they are? Because they've missed on quarterbacks in the first round. They had to go get Peyton Manning. He recovered them, brought them a Super Bowl and Super Bowl 50. But they're not – what they have been historically because they have missed on first-round quarterbacks. I hope Daniel Jones has a lot of success for Giants fans' sakes, uh, for his sake. But the fact of the matter is every single one of the Giants' three picks last night, they overvalued that player by at a minimum 10 spots. That is, that's a disaster just from a value proposition. They could have gotten a Pro Bowl defensive player next year at six, gotten – um, Daniel Jones at 17, gotten Dexter Lawrence at 37 tonight because Lawrence would have still been available, and they didn't need to trade up to get a corner because everybody in the league had corners rated differently. If you ask 20 general managers in the league, rate the top five corners, you're going to get 25 or 20 different top fives. So all of a sudden they trade up to get – listen, I like DeAndre Baker. He's a, he's a really good player. Mm-hmm. He was overvalued at that spot. So I don't know what Dave Gettleman is doing. He clearly, you know, stuck to his board, but I think ultimately it's going to bite him in the future. No kidding. Well, I'll give you uh, the flip side of that. Great. Somewhat, okay. Uh, I heard the Rams love DeAndre Baker to the point where they traded out uh, right away yep. when Baker went off the board. Yeah. Because the Giants traded up before him. Because they, if they clearly did like thought Baker, someone was going to take him. Right. So the the because the I think the Rams would have jumped on him at thirty at at thirty one. So there's that. 
obviously Dexter Lawrence's, um, if, if you say he would have been available tonight, I mean, there was a run on defensive uh, tackles, just an absolute flat out yep. run. And, and, and on were, Clemson defensive They were tackles worried too. about the Chargers, you know, down right. a little bit lower. They were worried about Tennessee. Those two teams ended up taking defensive tackles. Right. One, the, you know, the troubled Jeffrey, Jeffrey Simmons from Mississippi State. Right. Chargers took Jerry Tillery. So, that's, so I, I, I'm, I get, giving, I get I'm giving you the flip side on that. 100%. And then uh, in, in the 16 years that I've done this now with the NFL Network and 15 with just the draft alone, all I hear from evaluators, and I'm sure you would agree with this, if you love the quarterback, it doesn't matter where you take you him. You take him. Uh, you, you, you I take get him. And, and, and you heard what Gettleman said. He, he, he had him at hello at the, at the, at the Senior Bowl, Joel. I, I think it's the safe pick. Uh, you know, I talked about it matters. So – in the college game, you yes. have to understand. See, in the NFL, the margin between average players and great players is very small. Very small. Average teams and great teams, very small. Everything's a one one possession game, right? Yes. I mean, everything's kind of the same in the NFL. It is the exact opposite in the college game. You can put up monster numbers against terrible teams. And so I always separate out what do you do against quality opponents? You know, what do you do when it's a like opponent, when things are difficult on yes. you? So that's why I brought up the stat about Dwayne Haskins against top 25 yards per play defenses. He played five of those games last year. He was 62%, around 300 yards, 15 touchdowns, one interception. Best of anybody in the, in the top two rounds as far as quarterbacks go. Meanwhile, Daniel Jones was last on that list. Of any of the quarterbacks that I had rated for the top two rounds, mm. 59%, barely 230 yards, five touchdowns, three interceptions, with a rating just above 100. So for me, that matters. Now, you can also say Haskins had a better supporting cast, and I totally agree, agree with that. Right. Again, I hope Daniel Jones has a lot of success. But, man, it just felt like a giant reach for me based on what was happening at the college level, in particular against quality opponents. So then who did you like last night That of value in that pick? Like, like boy, that was a great spot right there. Would it, would it be would it I be thought Wilkins? Josh Allen would have been off the board right, by that seven point. Right, for and, Jacksonville. And in, I thought Josh Allen was the pick. I thought Ed Oliver would have been a terrific pick at for the that Giants. point, too. Yes. Yeah. Um, or or those Devin guys. Bush. You know how I yeah. feel about him, man. Yeah, you Steeler, Steeler fans are fired they should be. up right now. They had such a clear plan last night. They had two guys targeted. Mm -hmm. Devin White or Devin Bush. I believe that they were building for their division. There's some strong running games in that division. You got the running backs for Cleveland. You got Lamar Jackson. You, I mean, you've got to have a linebacker that can cover space, tackle well. And it's difficult always to talk about the football ramifications of the Ryan Shazier injury That's because a great of point. how significant the injury was. Yeah. But if we can put that aside and just talk about how it affected the defense it immeasurably, and Devin Bush could return that sideline to sideline mm -hmm. domination the, to that defense right there. And fits with cities, fan bases, and coaching staff. Right. That one felt like an immediate fit. His emotional kind of playing mentality, yes. I think, fits in Pittsburgh. They're going to love him. He's going to get that stadium going when he walks out there. By you the know, way, I mean, so, and, and I know I'm biased I love here. It. I know him by so would Winovich, who's from the area it's true. and who's available tonight. He is available he's, tonight. He's still out there tonight. I don't know. Again, they, they, they're they just might recreating have other needs. Don Brown's defense. I don't know, man. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it kind of worked for much of the time rather than anything else. And I loved Christian Wilkins, obviously, at 13 yeah, to Miami. That was a great pick, wasn't it? That was a good one, also. And then Denver getting Noah Fant at 20 after moving down from 10 was a nice With pick. With some right extra there. picks. Right. You know, so, yeah, I, I like that one as well. And I want to go back to Wilkins. Go for it. If, if Miami, I think Miami might be the only trade suitor for Rosen yes. at this point. But if you're sitting there from their perspective, if they could walk out of this draft having not given a first rounder for Josh Rosen, maybe even getting away with giving a late second or even next year's second, and they got Christian Wilkins, they would have to be thrilled. Paying Josh Rosen $6 million over three years, you get Wilkins – You'd all, all of a sudden have to look at Miami, boy. You'd say clearly they're, they are on that long road, exactly with the, con the contract for their coach, all, all of those things. Miami could, after tonight, be looking really good. Joel Klatt here on the Rich Eisen Show. I, I just don't see anybody coughing that type of, uh, of value for Rosen up, and it has nothing to do with Rosen's ability. There's no reason to give up a two this year, next year, a three even 
right now because the Cardinals, what are they going to do? Are they really going to have two young kids yeah. like that they in the same room? Up, I mean, same room? How can they do that? I, the, it's well, they can't. That's why there's no market. I thought that he should have been traded maybe even before free agency. Yeah. You know, I, I thought that, that that's when you were going to get the most value for Josh Rosen. Right there. They did have a couple of offers of firm seconds, and they didn't take them. They wanted a first. Well, the only danger in that, and we talked about it putting headsets on, is that Murray's baseball yes. uh, was always the if that even, even hours before they made him the first overall selection, mm -hmm. the highest honor you could give a college athlete is your first overall in the NFL draft. They're still trying to figure out language, the just in case. Yes. So you can't pull the trigger on something in February. You know, so here's the rock in a hard place they were in. If you did pull the trigger in February, now Murray's got you over a barrel. Yeah. And, and I mean, he can, he can demand whatever he wants because you are totally up a creek without a paddle. If you don't make the move in February and you wait until last night and you hope that the market materializes after you make the pick – and it doesn't, you're dead. There's, <laughs> That's the where we are. It's gone. It's, it's, I think it's gone. Is, it's I, evaporated. I think this is exactly what's happened. Uh, before I let you go, what do you think What do you think we're seeing tonight? Run on defensive backs? What do yeah. you think happens? Corners. This right. You know, I think we're going to see a lot of corners, um, in particular in this second round. I think we're going to see a lot of wide receivers. Exactly what we didn't see in the first round, right. you know, which was those skill position players. We had Marquise Brown and Nikhil Harry, but I think you're going to start to see maybe, you know, five, six wide receivers get uh, swiped off the board. And then I think that you're going to see fairly early – you're going to see a Drew Locke or a Will Greer, you, you know, mm -hmm. because um, those two guys were evaluated pretty high. Uh, but there were some questions. But at this point now, you feel like it's good value for the long run, maybe a backup role for the first couple of years and a long-term starter for you. So I think th those skill position players on offense and skill position players on defense, I think we're going to see a pretty good run. All right, since we've uh, – l last one, since we've been questioning Steve Kimes, uh acumen, let's do him a solid. Would you give up a two tonight for Rosen as opposed yeah. to Will Greer or Locke? I, I would. Now, I'm, I'm a big believer in Rosen. I would have had him like 1A, 1B with Kyler in this draft. So I was surprised that a trade didn't take, take place. The contract is super friendly. Um, I would. I would absolutely flip Arizona because, again, it's the same mantra you can say, well, did the Giants really make a mistake if they really got their guy? Well, if Rosen, you think, is yeah. going to be the guy. Right. Doesn't give a first. Who, I mean, who cares? You know. Well, I love uh, I love uh, everything that you do, Joel. I tell you that every single time. I appreciate I see it, man. And tonight's going to be uh, just it'll like be fun that. tonight. Right? It'll be great. Yep. You and Daniel Jeremiah, me and uh, and Charles Davis at seven Eastern time on the NFL Network. Joel Cloud, who does a great job with Gus. One time, you're going to come on the show, and you and I are just going to hear. Gus stories from your mouth. That's all I want. That's you know what. That's maybe great. maybe sometime in, in like June when we're not when you're just chilling. I would, I would love and, to do and, that. I can tell you the story of how Hollywood Brown became Hollywood Brown. It's epic. Okay, <laughs> this is this is what we call a tease right now. That's I know right. the the fans want it right yeah, now. But I'm sorry. Now, We've got saying. Eddie George. It's I called know. that's called a tease. Leave I you know. wanting more. I know. But again, maybe this summer when the NFL hays in the barn and yeah. you're not yet getting on the road, obviously for yeah. college football, we'll yeah. just it's just straight in. Come in and just tell me Gus stories. I would love to. Do All right, that. at Joel Clatt on Twitter, Joel underscore Clatt on Instagram tonight, seven Eastern time. Catch me and Joel and the rest of the NFL Network crew at work. Eddie George is going to be joining us next here live in Nashville on The Rich Eisen Show. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.